Amen. And we pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your magnificent grace, mercy, compassion, and divine healing. Father, we live in an extremely sick world, <coughs> both physically and spiritually, yet you bring divine healing to everyone. Lord, I pray that would be a very real and passionate reality for us, and not just something that is cognitive, but goes from the head to the heart and then to the feet, so that we might wake up from spiritual apathy. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, again, grace, mercy, peace, and you know what else? Real healing are yours in Jesus Christ, my fellow redeemer. Healing from anything is a tremendous blessing, is it not? Amen. Amen. And I think that most people uh, would say that in the strong affirmative. I've never met anybody yet that said, you know, something contrary to that. And I remember my own respective health challenges that I incurred. And I prayed to our gracious Lord, brothers and sisters, I'm a living testimony to receiving miraculous healing in a real short time. A very real testimony to our Lord's grace and mercies. Within our gospel text that I just read to you a little while ago, we see a miracle. We also see a sermon. Because the miracle was the cure of a man who was blind, who was lame, and he was paralyzed for 38 years. It's a long time. And within our text, Jesus enters Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate. Okay? So what? Well, we might not notice the significance of that. The sheep in Jerusalem that went through that gate were washed in the pool before entering the sanctuary in order to be purified before slaughtering as a sacrifice. And there are many gates in which to go in through the walled city of Jerusalem. Yet Jesus intentionally goes through the sheep gate. It was a type of a foreshadow of Jesus being the supreme sacrifice that he would accomplish on the cross. The pool where the sheep were cleansed was called Bethesda, which means house of grace. Hmm. These pools had five roof colonnades to them, which enclosed two separate pools. And they subsequently formed porches for the people who gathered there for healing. And so we see Jesus who intentionally goes up to Jerusalem for this feast. He doesn't stay away. You see, Jesus goes up to Jerusalem in order to be amongst a great number of people who are gathered there. Jesus, brothers and sisters, is very much a people person. And the people that were gathered there were gathered from all parts of the country for this feast. They had come together to worship God. Now this place was once again called Bethesda because within that place appeared much of the mercies of God to the sick and the diseased. In a world like them, as well as like ours, with so much misery, it is very much well that there truly exists a place of Bethesda. 
even today. We have hospitals calling that name, Bethesda. Because the sick within those porches were waiting for healing and relief. Are you also laying there for possibly the same reasons? For healing and relief. Some of you are. I know your journeys. If the past couple of years did nothing else, it has showed us very dramatically that we most certainly live in a world that is chock full of afflictions. Our world is full of people with various afflictions. Hospitals have been full to overflowing where there are no vacant beds available. And people have literally had to wait for vacancies to open up. And we all saw and we all experienced very much catastrophic results as a result of COVID-19. People today, as well as in Jesus' day, are very much in need of healing. And not only physically, but also spiritually. You see, the people within our text, they needed help in order to get into the pool for healing. For there was a cultic belief that the pool had healing powers of which angels were present at the waters for stirring. And people thereby waited for deliverance or healing. And some of them had been waiting for a long time. Have you also been waiting for a long time for healing as well? Jesus knows all of this. He also knows how long you've been waiting. But he also knows the sort of healing that you're desiring too. He knows all of it. And that is not a secret to Jesus. You see, Jesus always exercises intentional observation of people. Now, how do you find that fact? To be a source of comfort or maybe possibly a threat in some form? Because you can run, but you can't hide. He sees everything. He knows everything. He knows your thoughts before you even verbalize them or, ex or you know, act upon them. So is that a source of comfort or a source of threat for you? You see, my brothers and sisters, this observation of Jesus uh, that he exercises is also not just a quick glance or just some superficial glance either. But it very much is in an intentional seeking out of people. Because he's, he looks at you right into your heart. And mine. And nobody's exempt. So as a result, Jesus comes to Jerusalem, to Bethesda, in order to seek and to save that which is lost, the afflicted, both spiritually and physically. Jesus seeks and he saves the sick, because brothers and sisters, all people in the world are sick, with no exemption, ex exceptions. And so are you. So Jesus asks a bit of an awkward question. He says, do you want to be healed? So do you? And 
What kind of a question is that? Well, of course people want to be healed. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? Well, just perhaps we might be surprised that it's not as cut and dry as we might think. That people just might not desire to be healed. They want to remain safe. Jesus thereby focuses on the man this morning. For Jesus always delights in helping the helpless. The man is totally helpless. Physically and spiritually depleted. Can we also say the same thing? Or might we have to erroneously think and believe that we have truly some sort of virtue for which we can then rely upon? You know, the man definitely had no virtue at all in which to rely on or usurp over others. So he is totally willing to be ministered to. Once again, can we say the same thing? And do we really desire to be ministered to and healed? You see, Jesus' question as to you, do you want to be healed was to excite the man in order to provide for him a desire to be healed. Same holds true for us as well. And so Jesus enacts what's known as divine familiarity. Jesus has and he continues to be very much familiar with all people because he knows everything. You're not getting away with anything with Jesus. And he's also very tenderly inquisitive concerning the desires of those who are in affliction. And so he teaches them to value the mercies that are extended to them and us as well. He knew very well how long this man had been waiting as well as us, better than the man. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, as a result of his divine familiarity, knows all too well that in spiritual cases, please listen, people are not willing to be cured of their sins. For they honestly believe and think that they're not that bad and that they really feel that they're really quite good. However, Jesus is more than willing to heal if we are willing to be healed. Do you see the difference? It's huge. So how did this man respond to Jesus' divine invitation? He received a divine instruction from Jesus. For he was instructed, listen, to rise and walk. To get up and to put into action Jesus' healing. People today, all people, are given the exact same instruction from Jesus. To rise up from spiritual apathy and sleep, along with disbelief. And to trust in Jesus. And then to get up and walk in spiritual healing from humanity's greatest disease. Sin. Relying solely on the words of Jesus. And nothing from you at all. Period. As a result... 
The man did what Jesus instructed of him to do. In putting Jesus' words into active obedience, he received divine healing. We ought to do the exact same thing with word and sacrament ministry. Fully trusting in what Jesus says for the same result. Receiving divine healing from our spiritual afflictions. Jesus, in his grace and mercies, gives to us the strength in which to trust a man with and by the Holy Spirit. You see, brothers and sisters, if the man had not trusted in Jesus and his word and had tried to help himself, putting his trust in himself, he would have never been cured. He would have remained an invalid. The same result happens with us as well. He had to rely solely upon Jesus. And the same goes for us as well. Jesus' instruction received and acted upon results in divine healing all of the time, which is the complete and the total forgiveness of sins, life eternal, victory over sin, death, and the devil, and all the blessings of our Lord in abundance. And brothers and sisters, this is all a result of simply relying upon Jesus. And so my brothers and sisters, to Jesus be our glory and honor and praise. We pray. Lord Jesus, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for giving us the prescription for our healing. You. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we would take that prescription immediately. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.